do you disagree? Is it right? Right. Right. No, yeah. Yeah, so it's right? Right. Wait, I didn't, I didn't hear that. Was, was it right? Right. All right, all right. Non-apologetic news, not what you're used to. Non-apologetic news, telling you the truth. Non-apologetic news, saying what they're scared to. Non-apologetic news, do, do. Non-apologetic news. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Non-Apologetic News. News for people who hate the news. I am Travesty, and as always, sitting right next to me is Body Bad. We are non-apologetic news. First off, I'd like to go ahead and thank Body Bag for showing up today. I know you wanted the day off, but we really appreciate you coming in anyways. How are you feeling today? I don't like subtitles. Me neither. We have that in common. Okay, now first up, I want to talk about a misconception that we have here in Missouri. Now, I am a federal firearms dealer, so every once in a while, I am privy to certain information that everyone may not know. In Missouri, and depending on what state you're in, there's a good chance it's happening. We allow handshake deals. So what that means is that if you want to sell a gun to your neighbor, maybe, or to anyone else, you can go ahead and sell it to them. You can write a bill of sale if you want, or you could just do nothing and just flat out sell it to them. No regulation. Now, I'm all for keeping the government out of what guns you own and what have you, but I think what most people don't understand is that this is the kind of thing that could very well send you to prison for a long time. Jailed. For life. So every gun that is bought new, bought from a dealer, is tied to someone. So if you go in and you buy a gun at your local shop, you do your background check and all that, even though there's no registration, that gun is forever tied to you. So let's say you handshake deal it. Let's say you sell it to Jimmy. Okay. A few years later, you get a knock on the door. You didn't know what Jimmy was into. Jimmy's done killed somebody with that gun. So what happened is they retrieved the gun, they con the ATF that is, and they contact the manufacturer. The manufacturer says what store it came from, and then the store will say, oh yeah, we sold it to that guy. So they go knock on your door with suspicion of murder. They don't know that you sold that gun, so now you have to explain to them, yes, I sold that gun. Yes, I did it properly. So they're like, oh, you sold it to Jimmy, huh? Okay, we're going to go talk to Jimmy. Now, Jimmy's expecting him because he's already murdered somebody with that gun. So when the ATF knocks on his door, he says, no, I never bought that gun. I don't even know who that guy is. I think he's trying to hide something. So now the police have to decide who's going to be charged and best believe on a gun charge. Somebody's getting charged. And a lot of people think the um, the bill of sale is what's going to save them. But here's what's happening. People who buy their guns from the store, you know, like I say, it's forever tied to them. They know that. Let's say they accidentally kill someone or they wind up doing a robbery or something with their gun. They're writing bill of sales as if they did a handshake deal and sold it and like predating it a year or two to where when the police come knock on their door, they show them the bill of sale and they say, nah, look, I sold it to someone. So the police are seeing it both ways. They're seeing real bills of sales, fake bills of sales, people lying. But that gun is forever tied to you. Excuse me, if you buy it from a store, unless you go into a store to do a transfer of ownership. So we're going to go to Texas. Well, I mean, we could do it right here in Missouri. We don't have to go to Texas. You have a gun you want to sell or come to a guy like me, they'll do a transfer. Now you'll think, well, now the government knows who has what gun. But once you rather the government know that you don't have that gun anymore, then for them to still think you have it, because even though you don't think they're a registration, there is still a database. So you have the information. You can do what you want with it as long as you understand the dangers. Now, if you're someone who's buying I mean, go ahead and handshake deal all day. But then once again, if you go to sell it, you're now in that same boat where the next man you sell it to, to could do something pretty bad. And you have to now prove you weren't in possession at that time. Whereas if you just went and did a transfer of ownership, boom, bomb, boom. So, you know, I think that follows underneath the category of. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. So you can do whatever you want. All I want to do is tell you the rules so you can get all excited. Dude, yeah. we don't exist there, not, baby. <laughs> That's right. Next up, I'd like to talk about something a little bit different. 
Uh, we have a uh, Wiz Khalifa. He uh, he made this video about the way he smokes. Did you did you have a chance to see this? It's been making its rounds around everywhere. I did not. Oh well, all right. This is gonna be a treat for you then. <clears throat> He explains how he inhales, and this is almost a one-minute video, but man, it is just absolutely insane. Y'all can stop saying I don't inhale, too. First of all, I've been smoking weed longer than you've been alive. Second of all, I roll these joints fat as hell, so I'm allowed to blow a little bit of smoke out before inhaling. This is what happens when I take a pull up. See, I blow a little bit out, but as you can see, there's still smoke in there. I could do this. This is what you want me to do. You do because you smoke trash blunts and bad weed. That's cool, too. That's an inhale. It's a real inhale. But when you smoking like this, <coughs> you smoking a Cohiba. <coughs> You don't need to do all that because you're going to be smoking this thing. All right, that's enough. This dude's an outright fool. Uh, what, I mean, what do you think about this, like, initial impressions? Say so he's 62. Uh, no, he's actually, I think, in his 30s. He just looks like an old lady. Good call. Now, so <laughs> he literally says that if you smoke good herb, you should take a hit Hold it in your mouth, essentially blow out 90% of it before you inhale and just inhale the tail of it. And he threw insults, okay? He says that if you actually inhale, if you smoke like a normal person, right, then it's because you smoke trash herb. For one, if you smoke trash herb, good for you. Maybe you don't want to spend $100 a week. Plus, uh, even the purists I know, they actually smoke. It's not just nonsense like this. So why would why would he want to do this, right? Why would he want to waste 90% of all the herby smokes? I got to thinking about it and I mean, I seriously think it's just to make himself look cool. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what the fuck indeed. So he wants to be the guy that everybody sees smoking herb. Oh, man, I went and talked to Wiz. He was blazing a big old fatty. I came back an hour later. He's still smoking. But in reality, that whole fatty he smoked, he took like two real hits, you know, all accumulative, accumulative amount. And really, it's an insult to all real potheads. And what was funny is when he actually took the real hit, you can tell he doesn't take real hits anymore. He had that big cough, you know, where like if you have a clean system and you go to smoking, I don't even think this dude is high. I think everyone, he wants everyone to think he's high. Do you think that's right or do you disagree? Is it right? Right. Right. No, yeah. Yeah. So it's right? Right. Wait, I didn't, I didn't hear that. Was, was it right? Right. All right. All right. All right. As long as you agree with me. <laughs> I'm going to feel free. Everybody tag him. It ain't going to bother me a bit. Oh, before we move on to the last story, I do want to announce we are still in the middle of the PS5 giveaway. Um, you know, we film these a little bit before they come out, the shows, but I think there's still another week. We're going to announce it on the week of, we're going to announce it on the show on the uh, 19th, it looks like. So we'll give you all till like the 16th or so. I'll, I'll post the exact deadline in the description. It is time. You say, well, what is it time for? Well, I'll tell you if I can find the button. It is time now that we are in January for the countdown to Elden Ring. Woo! For those who do not know, Elden Ring is the newest offering from a company called From Software. From Software is most notably known for their work on the Dark Soul series, right? You like the Soul series. We all like the Soul series. How? Do, just out of curiosity, how do you think this is going to be? I mean, do you think like it's going to be well received and it's going to make a bunch of money? I mean, what do you think is going to happen with it? It's a hot seller. <clears throat> that's what they are. Oh, I, I, I guarantee it's going to be a hot seller. Matter of fact, I went ahead and got my pre-order in. Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. You have Bloodborne, you have Sekiro, Sekiro, whatever you call it. Huge boss. It's just insane. And most people, the only thing they know about it is the difficulty level, right? But there's a lot more to it than that. It's a satisfying difficulty. It's not a game you can just play through. And I guess it is a little bit of a tip to your hat if you're able to get through those games without help. They've designed a new game, Elden Ring, 
and I think it's an open world version. And we want to do a countdown to it because by my count, we are shy of a month and a half. Five weeks? Maybe we should have waited to do the countdown. Six weeks out, countdown, L. Den Ring. Now, I have made it a point not to watch any trailers. Did you watch the trailer for this? D did you watch it? I never bothered to watch it. Never bothered. A little, little bit of uh, attitude. But you have seen uh, a little bit of the buzz around it, though, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Now, as someone who's played a little bit of from software games, what would you give it like as far as the hype and the stuff you're seeing out there right now? I I, I give it an eight. Eight, eight is eight is fair, you know. But I have I've stayed away every time I go on YouTube. It's you know they apparently let the game out for like uh, people reviewers to play for like three three uh three months or something. I, I'm not really sure. And if you don't know, because I know uh, I've talked to a lot of people who don't know much about games, they don't play games. I want to play a little bit of a trailer from the first Souls game I played, Dark Souls 3. Check out this little snippet here. Look at that. Talking true legends, those who would link the fire will face death. Enough death to leave you broken. To be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Look at that. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. Just, this is just too sick, you know, and this is the one that came out like, I don't know, this was, here, we'll go and pause it. This was six or seven years ago, but this stuff is great, man. I don't know. I'm going to adore it. We are counting down. We are waiting Elden Ring, Elden Ring and From Software. We are expecting a lot. Please deliver. And whoever gets the PS5, hell, It'll be just in time for Elden Ring. We can do that. Is there anything else you would like to add to the show before we go, buddy? I'm out. You're out? All right, fair enough. I think we all should be out. Now, before we go, once again, PS5 giveaway. Like. Wait, no, that's not right. PS5 giveaway. Subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment somewhere on a video and you will be entered to win. We will do the drawing on this show. And then we will ship you out your PS5. We will be back every Wednesday. We'll see you next time, folks. Do not watch the news. Good night, everyone. I'm out. Not apologetic, dude. Not apologetic, dude.